When it comes to Hollywood adaptations of video game movies, they have generally received mixed to negative reception. In the three decades of video game movies that we've seen, only a select amount have managed to escape the dreaded video game movie curse. Although very few, some have received positive reviews and big box office numbers, proving that there is an audience for these movies and that they can be successful. Too often, video game movies try to be too much like video games rather than focus on being a movie. These movies tend to do better when they use the characters we're familiar with and explore different stories with them. Video game movies have started to see a positive trend over the last decade and have shown that they don't have to be cinematic masterpieces. They just have to be a decent film first, include a few easter eggs, and give the fans what they want to see their favorite video games on the big screen. We're looking at video game movies that have been theatrically released in the US over the years by finding the best trailers. Why trailers and not the movie itself? Think about it as expectation versus reality, meaning the movie could have been terrible, but the trailer looked promising or entertaining enough for video game fans. The Super Mario Bros. movie was the first attempt at adapting a video game into a major motion picture. Released in 1993, the result was a comedy adventure starring two of the most recognizable video game characters. Unfortunately, the movie wasn't well received outside of its special effects and flopped a few days later due to the release of the massive blockbuster giant Jurassic Park. Super Mario Bros. went through trouble before hitting theaters with rewrites and onset drama. Mario and Luigi, played by Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, have both stated that it was a nightmare. This led them to drink before and during filming to get through it. Hoskins called the movie one of the worst things he's ever worked on, but had taken the role for his 7-year-old son, a fan of the video game. While it might seem like a dystopian relic from the 90s, the film has been looked at fondly over the years and gained a cult following. Right, it's the list. first uh, video game ever made into a movie. Right, and now those things are they come out once a month, so you were a trailblazer. <laughs> I was a pioneer. The Assassin's Creed series is an open-world action-adventure video game taking place throughout time, featuring historical events such as the American Revolution and the Italian Renaissance. A big part of these games is the setting and the player experiencing it by meeting significant figures from the time period. The movie mostly follows this, but spends too much time going back and forth between the past and the present, often cutting in between the action. One of the major aspects I had going for it was the inclusion of Michael Fassbender as the lead. He had never heard of the video game prior to the movie, but was committed to the project and also attached as a producer. Fassbender played an original character in the Assassin's Creed universe with an ancestor in 15th century Spain. This would have been great to see more of, but the film failed to turn a profit. A possible sequel was in the works, but was ultimately cancelled after the Disney-Fox merger. Assassin's Creed is a movie that on paper should have worked, but missed the leap of faith. If anything, it'd be nice to see Ubisoft pick up where the movie left off, with a game centered on the Spanish assassin Aguilar, possibly played by Fassbander. I did get some drawn of the game, but again, also frustrated that I kept like climbing up, turning around, <laughs> climbing up. I was like, come on, get out of the corner. <laughs> the Resident Evil games got a movie first, but the Silent Hill movie gave horror fans a more faithful adaptation of its source material with its small town setting and foggy atmosphere. It helped that the director was a fan of the series and spent years convincing Konami for the film's rights. Team Silent, the developer was also involved in the production and provided the game's score for the film, keeping a similar sound. Although some fans were upset that the movie mixed elements from the games, the movie stuck closer to its horror roots compared to the action route that the Resident Evil movies took. This was far from the worst horror that the fanbase has experienced. Silent Hill fans have been left disappointed since 2012, which could have been a notable year for the franchise, but proved to be a critical one instead. The year saw multiple releases, with the latest entry in the series, a collection, a spin-off, and the sequel to the 2006 film, but each had its own handful of issues. The lowest blow was the movie's sequel, which was listed as one of the worst films of 2012. The franchise suffered more in 2015 when Konami infamously cancelled Silent Hills. 
A planned reboot of the video games, led by Metal Gear creator Hidel Kojima, along with the involvement of horror director Guillermo del Toro and actor Norman Reedus. We played the game once, in her Winnebago, and then again, and then again, and then again. We could never get past level one. We could never get past the fog. We tried. We really tried, you know. Video game movies have to appeal to the general movie goer, but some have a built-in audience. Warcraft is a great example of this, as it was clearly made for the fans first and foremost. Despite the negative reviews from critics, it didn't stop fans from watching and enjoying the movie. It stands as the most successful video game movie in terms of box office gross, beating out Detective Pikachu and Rampage for the number one spot. Audiences were treated to an abundant amount of references to various locations and characters from the overall Warcraft lore and a fantasy epic with hints to more expansions. Given its success, it's surprising we haven't already seen more movies based on Activision Blizzard's other popular franchises. However, they have formed a company specifically to manage movie and TV adaptations of their games, with plans for a cinematic universe based on the Call of Duty franchise. Now, it's only a matter of time until we see a fully animated Overwatch movie hit the big screen. Oh man, I want to put this on right now. You can. Let's try it, come on. No talk. It's really impressive. I'm feeling it. Yeah. The Laura Croft Tomb Raider movies in 2001 and 2003 starred Angelina Jolie as one of the most popular female video game characters. According to the director, the movie had to break into an audience that wasn't used to woman-led summer blockbusters, but it wasn't too much of an issue. Lara Croft Tomb Raider opened as the top grossing video game movie of the 2000s, primarily thanks to Jolie's physical performance as Lara Croft. This was before Jolie was a leading lady, and the film actually helped establish her action star career. The Tomb Raider video games saw a reboot in 2013 with the release of Tomb Raider, a more grounded approach following the origins of Lara Croft's journey before becoming the world-renowned Tomb Raider. A film following the rebooted game released in 2018 starring Alicia Vikander as a younger Lara Croft. The rebooted movie was better received thanks to its action sequences and Vikander's own portrayal as the new Lara Croft. Coincidentally, the reboot made the same amount of money as Jolie's first Tomb Raider with $274 million gross at the box office, leading to the development of a sequel with Vikander set to reprise the role. I myself, I was 9, 10 years old when I walked into a living room of my friend's house and I saw it was a female protagonist in a video game and hey, I had never seen that. Even Angelina Jolie made her into an icon. I have never seen an action heroine up on the screen at that age. The Prince of Persia movie was Disney's attempt at recreating their success of turning a theme park attraction into a fantasy film franchise. Disney saw this as their next Pirates of the Caribbean and heavily invested into the film's production. With a bigger budget and talented actors like Jake Gyllenhaal, Prince of Persia proved to be an improvement for video game movies, but it wasn't the hit that Disney had planned due to its massive budget. It cost Disney an estimated $200 million, making it one of the most expensive video game movies ever produced. Incidentally, there was a video game released alongside the movie, but it wasn't the typical tie-in game. Instead of going with the movie, Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands followed the established story from the previous games. While it's not the worst game in the series, its overall lukewarm reception along with the movie failed to move the franchise forward. This put The Prince of Persia on pause for over a decade until Ubisoft announced a remake to the 2003 game The Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, essentially resetting the franchise with a remake to the reboot of the original 1989 game. But the best performance, most courageous performance I have seen all year is Fred Molina's performance in this movie when he has to kiss an ostrich. The Resident Evil movies have been seen as a fanfic from director and writer Paul W.S. Anderson. The movies featured an original character played by Mila Jovovich who would later marry Anderson and subsequently star in every Resident Evil movie. This put a lot of fan favorite characters like Jill Valentine in the backseat in favor of Jovovich which reduced iconic characters to simple fan service. I'm good. 
I'm not that good. Somehow, these movies still did what other video game movies have only hoped to achieve. They actually started a movie franchise based on a video game. Resident Evil stands as the most successful video game movie series with a total of six movies and over one billion dollars gross at the box office. Thanks to the film's success, the game started to take a more action-focused approach turning some fans away. The most recent games have returned to their horror roots, finding massive success with Resident Evil 7 and 8. Interestingly enough, the movie franchise is seeing a reboot, with the new director promising the familiar horror and atmosphere of the games. Regardless of their reputation, the Resident Evil movies kept interest in the franchise and reminded fans that there's always a reason to be afraid. You're all going to die down here. The fact that the Resident Evil movie franchise has taken the game franchise to like a whole new level. The Sonic the Hedgehog movie could have been one of the biggest box office disasters of 2020, but instead it kicked off the new decade with the biggest opening weekend for a video game movie. The movie was almost doomed to fail based on reactions to the now infamous design of Sonic seen in the first trailer. The movie's initial design featured a realistic humanoid hedgehog that was off-putting and received universal dislike online. This prompted the movie's director to reassure upset fans that their voices were heard and changes were coming to Sonic. A few months later, a second trailer went up with a different tone and a newly redesigned Sonic as promised. The updated design was well received by fans and even Sonic's creator, who had also disliked the first design due to its humanoid appearance. The new design was a more familiar take on Sonic, which was closer to the video game's cartoonish style, gloves included. The redesign took about 5 months and an estimated $5 million to complete. The process paid off for Paramount as Sonic sped into the number one spot at the box office, with a sequel on the way and potential for a fully fledged franchise. They say don't meet your heroes, and this one, like, no. I'm, I'm glad I got to meet my heroes. Mortal Kombat and Tomb Raider are two video game movies that both saw a sequel and received a reboot. The original Mortal Kombat movie was released in 1995 after the Super Mario Bros. movie fiasco. It beat out the Street Fighter movie as a fairly received video game adaptation by both fans and critics. Although the movie stopped short at a PG-13 rating, fans still saw some of the series' most iconic characters fight on the big screen. Audiences were treated to a fantasy martial arts film with a techno soundtrack to match the intensity of the series' over-the-top brutality. The sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, failed to live up to the first film, disappointing fans and critics. This left Mortal Kombat as the highest rated video game movie for over 20 years until the 2018 release of the rebooted Tomb Raider. Mortal Kombat saw its own reboot in 2021. The new film came with an R rating and promised to include the game's infamous finishers, the fatalities. Despite some disagreement over the inclusion of an original character as the film's lead, the reboot still managed to please longtime fans by delivering the action and gore that made the games popular. Kinda wins. People in the video game business really liked Mortal Kombat because it was probably the first movie that took a video game and made it, you know, really made it happen on the screen. Pokemon Detective Pikachu set high expectations as one of the most popular video game properties to be adapted into a movie in recent times. Released one year before the Sonic movie, fans were quick to draw comparisons between the faithfulness of the designs between the two. But keep in mind, this was before Sonic's redesign. The initial Sonic reveal was disliked for being radically different, but Detective Pikachu delivered on bringing familiar Pokemon to life with the best they've ever looked in 3D. It also gave fans a different different story featuring a talking Pikachu voiced by Ryan Reynolds on a case to find his missing partner. Based on the spin-off game of the same name, Pokemon Detective Pikachu moves away from the catching and battling mechanics of the main series games to a mystery-focused adventure. This approach wasn't exactly what longtime fans expected. The battles are usually the biggest part of Pokemon games, but not Detective Pikachu. This is why there weren't many battles in the movie, but it did feature over 50 fan-favorite Pokemon from a total of nearly 
900 for new and old fans to catch on screen. Detective Pikachu could have easily gone the way the Super Mario Bros. movie did, but against all odds, it was one of the few video game franchises that wasn't a cinematic disaster. Released at the end of the 2010s, it helped spark a new decade of video game movies with Sonic giving the 2020s a good start. These movies don't have the best track record, but given the popularity of video games, there's always a new slate of movies in production, with some that look promising and a few that manage to pull it off. I immerse myself completely within the world of Pokemon. I read about them, I live at his height, I tried to lose 182 pounds to match his weight until doctors intervened. I mean, he, he didn't even change his voice. It just, it just sounds like him. 